Santa Claus goes to Mr Pinkwhistle. One Christmas night, Santa Claus went out to set off as usual in his sleigh. As soon as he stepped out the castle door, he stopped in dismay. What a win, he said as his red cord flapped around his legs. And my word, what snow! I'll be lucky if I find my way about tonight. Hey there, Trig and Trim, are the reindeer ready? Trig and Trim were the two little imps who went with Santa Claus in his sleigh. One of them drove the reindeer for him, and the other helped him to tie and untie his sack of toys. They called back at once. Yes, Santa, they're ready, but they don't like this wind and snow. They are very restless indeed. Santa Claus got into the sleigh and settled down. I'd better drive, he said. But dear me, his hands were so cold that he soon had to hand the reins to Trig. How the wind buffeted his sleigh as it sped through the sky that night. Whoo! it shouted and almost deafened Santa Claus. Then there came such a snow squall that the reindeer couldn't see where they were going and galloped around in circles and the sleigh almost turned on its side. Out fell Trig and Trim with loud yells and tumbled right down to earth, falling on banks of soft snow. Santa Claus had his eyes shut because of the snow, and he didn't even see them go, so he was more surprised when he opened his eyes again and saw that he was the only one in the sleigh. Good gracious, now what am I to do, he thought, and he clutched the loose reins to try and calm the reindeer. I must get help, things are certainly very wrong tonight, but who can help me? And then he suddenly remembered dear old Mr Pinkwhistle, the little man who always puts wrong things right. Perhaps he can do something for me, thought Santa, pulling at the reins. Oh there, behave yourselves, reindeer. My sack of toys nearly fell out then. What would the children say if there were no toys in their stockings tomorrow morning? Santa Claus was a good way from where Mr Pinkwhistle lived, but the reindeer could go as fast as lightning if they chose, and very soon the sleigh was right over Mr Pinkwhistle's little cottage. Sooty his cat suddenly heard the sound of sleigh bells and was astonished. Meow, meow, master, he cried, running into Mr Pinkwhistle's room. I can hear Santa coming. Nonsense, said Pinkwhistle, who was sitting cosily by the fire. There are no children here, you're mistaken. But just at that moment, there came a thunderous knock at Pinkwhistle's door, and a great voice shouted loudly, Hey, Pinkwhistle, open the door, man. It's me, Santa Claus. Sooty and Pinkwhistle ran to the door together, astonished and delighted. Santa Claus came in, covered with snow, stamping his feet and rubbing his hands. Come in, come in. This is an honour, said Pinkwhistle gladly. Sooty, fetch some hot drinks. I can't stay, Pinkwhistle, said Santa Claus. I've come for your help. You put things right when they go wrong, don't you? I try to, sir. I always try to, said Pinkwhistle, feeling even more surprised. But surely you don't want my help? I do. I most certainly do, said Santa Claus. My reindeer lost their way in this blizzard and ran around in circles, so the sleigh almost tipped over, and Trig and Trim, my two helpers, fell out. Good gracious, said Pinkwhistle. Are they hurt? Oh, no, they'll be all right, said Santa Claus. There was thick snow on the ground. It'll feel like falling on a nice soft feather bed. But I can't get them back, and I need help. You see, I have to keep looking at my notebook to see the names and addresses of children I'm going to leave presents for. So someone must drive the reindeer. And I also need someone to tie and untie the sack for me, and hold it so that I can take out the toys that I want. I see, said Pinkwhistle, frowning as he thought very hard indeed. Yes, you must certainly have help. Ah, here is Shooty with some hot drinks. What will you have, Shanta? Cocoa, tea, or hot lemon? Well, I wouldn't mind some of all three, said Santa. I'm so very cold. Feel my hands. How could I drive reindeer with hands as cold as that? Why, I couldn't even feel the reins. They sat sipping the hot drinks, and Pinkwhistle began to worry about how he could put things right for such an important person as Santa Claus. Sooty stood nearby and thought hard too. Well, can you think of a way to help me? asked Santa Claus, finishing his second cup of cocoa and starting on the tea. Don't you disappoint me now. I've heard great things of you, Pinkwhistle. Yes, great things. 
I can't think of anyone who would be able to drive reindeer through the sky, said Pink Whistle. I know a young air pilot who flies planes, but reindeer are very different. My dear fellow, of course they're different, but they're well trained, said Santa. They're as easy to drive as horses, but they go much faster. Anyone who can drive horses would do. Anyone. There's nobody living here that can drive, said Pink Whistle, beginning to feel quite desperate. And we'd never be able to get through this blizzard to the man who keeps the riding stables in the next village. Should you know anyone nearby who'd be able to drive Santa's reindeer? Meow less, master, said Sooty at once. Dear me, who, said Pink Whistle in surprise. Meow, why you, said Sooty, and even if you couldn't drive, I'm sure it'd be easy to manage well-trained reindeer. Good gracious, yes, I suppose I could drive the sleigh, said Pink Whistle, suddenly excited. Where's my own thick coat, Sooty? And I shall want a woolly scarf to tie my hat on my head. And I'll keep my warm slippers on my feet, or I will get cold. Dear me, what an idea. A very, very good one, said Santa Claus, beaming. It would be nice to have your company in the sleigh tonight, Pink Whistle. You're a good fellow, I like you, and I'm not surprised that children think of you as a friend. Right, you shall drive, but now who can come and handle the big sack for me? What about your next door neighbour? They're away, said Pink Whistle, but again Sooty knew what to do. Meow, meow, I'm coming, he said, and his green eyes shone brightly. Meow, I can help with the sack. I'm used to helping Mr. Pink Whistle in all kinds of ways. Santa Claus, and I know you can help you too. Please, meow, do let me come. Well, what an idea, said Pink Whistle again. Yes. I don't see why you shouldn't come, Sooty. You're very clever and always helpful. Santa Claus, I think he'll manage the sack very well for you. Splendid, said the jolly old fellow, drinking the hot lemon juice. Well, can we start now? I feel much warmer. Even my hands are beginning to warm up. Feel them! Pink Whistle was soon dressed warmly in his thickest top coat and had his hat tied firmly on his head with a woolly scarf. He kept his comfortable slippers on and put his woolen gloves down to the fire to warm. You'd better borrow one of my short coats, should you? said Pink Whistle. Meow, no, I'll be quite warm enough in my own black fur coat, said Sooty. Meow, borrow one of your scarves, though, master. Are we ready now? Meow, the reindeer must be getting impatient because I can hear their bells ringing very loudly. Sooty put some coal on the fire, put the guard around it, turned out the lights, and off they went out of doors into the snow. Thank goodness the wind isn't looking so fierce now, said Santa Claus, looking around for his reindeer. Goodness me, is that mound over there my sleigh and reindeer? Why, they're covered with snow! So they were, and it was quite a job to get the snow off and climb into the sleigh. Pink Whistle took the reins very proudly indeed, and the reindeer tossed their beautiful antlers and made their bells ring out loudly. You're not nervous, are you, Pink Whistle? said Santa Claus. No, not a bit, said Pink Whistle. This is one of the nicest jobs I've ever had to do to help anyone. Ready? Sooty, sit down or you'll be blown out. They set off and in half a minute were galloping through the wind-blown sky. The snow had almost stopped falling now, so it was much easier to see the way. The reindeer knew it well, for they had galloped the same way for hundreds of years. Pink Whistle enjoyed himself very much indeed, and so did Sooty. In fact, Sooty felt very important whenever he had to open the sack for Santa and then tie it up safely again. Santa always knew exactly what to take out of it. See, I have a long list, he said to Sooty, and showed it to him. I've written down on it all the things the children have asked me for. We've just taken an aeroplane out of the sack for this boy John now. Here, here's his name. Here's his name. You see, I've written aeroplane down beside it. I'd never remember all these things without my list. Thank goodness it didn't blow away in the wind. Now... I'll just climb down this chimney if you'll hold the reindeer still on the roof, Pink Whistle. I've trained them not to stamp about on roofs, so they'll be quite quiet. It was really a very exciting night for Mr. Pink Whistle and Sooty. They'd never enjoyed themselves so much in all of their lives. Sooty thought the sack of toys was marvellous. It always seemed as full as ever, no matter how many toys Santa took out of it. 
One child has asked for a clockwork mouse, said Santa to Sooty. Ah, that's the kind of toy you'd like, wouldn't you? Now, just let me look at my list again. We're getting on. When all the toys had been put into the stockings of many, many children, Pink Whistle drove back to his own little house again and got out of the sleigh very regretfully. Sooty jumped out too and ran indoors to fetch lumps of sugar for the reindeer. Can you drive yourself back home now, Santa? asked Mr Pink Whistle. Let me feel your hands. Yes, they're lovely and warm. Oh, I'll be all right now, said Santa. The wind has dropped and it's much warmer, and I shan't have to delve into my sack any more. I shall just sit back in my seat and hold the reins loosely and let the reindeer gallop back home at top speed. I have enjoyed going out with you on Christmas Eve and driving your reindeer, said Pink Whistle. Well, I'll know where to come next time things go wrong, said Santa Claus, shaking the reins and clicking the reindeer, who were now all munching Sutley's lumps of sugar. Many, many thanks. Goodbye, Pink Whistle. Goodbye, Sooty. And with a ring of bells, they were off. Pink Whistle and Sooty couldn't help feeling sad that their grand adventure was over. They went indoors together, and will you believe it? There on the table was a present for each of them. A new top hat for me, and a great big clockwork mouse for you, Sooty, said Pink Whistle in surprise. How did Santa put them here without us knowing? Well, isn't he a grand old fellow? Meow, yes, Mr Pink Whistle, he is, and so are you.